I want to get you started. We are filming this for folks at home that couldn't make it tonight because I know how hard it is for everybody to get out. But I do want to thank all the folks that came, and I promise you everybody's going to go home with something uh, because I really can't be more appreciative that people took the time to come out to invest um, in their children's future. Uh, and that's really important to what we do. So this is actually um, something that was set up in the legislature uh, many years ago. Will says I gotta eat the microphone. Uh, and this was something that was set up in the legislature and it just has really been hard to market it because we always think about, oh, we don't have that $10, we don't have that $5. I can tell you that I've done it with my own children. Um, two of my stepchildren did it. And although they didn't go to college, they had a nice little nest egg when they got out of school and they used it for things to pursue their educational goals. One went through some drama classes that she wanted and some art stuff and another one used it for books on different things. So it's your money regardless um, and it's your opportunity. And what I can tell you at our house, what we did is we think about where could we cut in order to do this five children, eight grandchildren, and what we found was it was the stop at Green Valley Grocery, right? So I don't know about anybody else, but when I go to get gas, I go in, I get a drink, ha, oh, that candy bar looks really good, and that maybe get something for somebody at home, and before I know it, I'm at $15, $20, uh, just plus my gas. So we actually cut those out so that we could invest um, in our kids and their futures. So we wanted to make sure that people had an opportunity to see how easy it is um, to do that. Um, financial literacy, um, I was just telling the commissioners the other day, I sat down with my 30-year-old um, kids and their friends this weekend and they were talking about FICO scores and how they wish they would have learned about that in high school. And um, one of my daughter's friends was bragging that she had an 18% interest rate on her car loan, um, but which was way better than the 24 that she had four months before she refinanced. And so uh, we really want to do a better job in Clark County, uh, helping kids be prepared for all of those financial um, things and help people get back on track. And I don't know if you've seen, but um, Clark County has recently started to invest in affordable housing, because if you tell me that $1,900 for rent is affordable, it's, it's not, and it's not sustainable. So we are actually building properties where people can, at some point, buy a home. Uh, and I say that because my children are still at home, and I don't think they're ever leaving, because they can't afford to get out on their own. And my granddaughter swears that that is her home. Uh, and I'm like, oh, we're going to have to see about that. But I really want people to have the same opportunities. And it starts with financial literacy. And it starts with investing in education so they can learn about it. So tonight, we're going to give away. Um, our office has worked pretty hard. And we want to thank the treasurer's office. We're going to give away um, the first round. We're going to give 10 $100. Uh, certificates out so that it goes right into your child's savings account because we really thank you for coming and that uh, waives the $15 um, that you when you signed in. So everybody for sure leaves with a hundred bucks. Uh, secondly, um, in the middle, we're gonna let the treasurer's office answer some questions and really talk about the program. Um, we're, we'll give out eight more and then at the end, we'll give out five, $529. Um, ways to get started for education. And so for the kids that came, we were able to partner with UNLV and get you a little bit of swag, some chips and a drink. Uh, so thanks for coming with your parents because I know it's not always fun, so we'll get you in and out of here. Um, but I want to thank the treasurer's office. So I'm real big on collaborating because our system is hard to navigate, no matter who you are and how much you have between the state and the local. So. Treasurer Conan could not be here, it's his birthday, but I wanna wish him a happy birthday, but I also wanna tell him if it was my birthday, I would've been here anyways, but it's okay. Uh, I would let, uh, I encourage him to spend that time with his family because it has been a rough two years for all of us. Um, so just kidding and happy birthday, because now I'm sure he's listening, because somebody probably texted him and told him that I called him out. 
So, but I'm okay with that. So um, with that, I would like to welcome the Deputy Treasurer, uh, um, Tia uh, Matthias Coleman, and she's on video. Good evening. My name is Tia Mathis Coleman, Deputy Treasurer for our College Savings Division. On behalf of our State Treasurer, Zachary Conine, and the entire College Savings team, I am excited to welcome you to tonight's event. We are thrilled to collaborate with Chair Kirkpatrick and her entire team. Our division is committed to helping Nevadans plan, pay, and save for post-secondary education. Tonight is going to be a very informative event for you and your family. After tonight, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to my team. Remember, families, it is never too early to start planning for your post-secondary education. Again, please visit our website, navigate.gov, or reach out to one of our team members to learn more. Thanks again, and please enjoy tonight's event. Uh, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and invite the treasurer's office down because they actually have a little presentation. So thanks for coming out. Thanks for being our partner. And we look forward to hearing from you and uh, couldn't be happier to partner with the state. Thank you again, Chair Kirkpatrick, for having us. Louder? There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Kirkpatrick, for having us today. Um, so my name is Abraham Gomez. This is Troy Watts right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and present half of the presentation. We're going to take a break, um, do some more raffles, I believe, and then Troy will pick up the second portion of the presentation. So um, thank you again for having us tonight. Um, we can go ahead and we can get into it. So this again, this is our state treasurer, Zach Conine. It is his birthday. <laughs> um, so happy birthday to him. Um, and when he did run, he did run, when he ran for treasurer, he did want to help a post-secondary education and make it more affordable, attainable. And during his time in office, he has done that. Uh, we have a scholarship database for high school students. Um, you can go to our website, uh, navigate.gov, and we have over 335 scholarships you can find there. Uh, they are in-state scholarships, but if you are interested, if your child is interested in going to an in-state school, um, it's a great resource to use. Next slide, please. So this is what we're going to cover today, um, a little bit of everything. Uh, we're going to cover the College Kickstart program, uh, which we kind of talked about outside. It is a program that gives you $50 for any kindergartner through sixth grade currently um, that the state will give you on behalf. So. Um, the $50, you cannot contribute to that account, but um, it is going to build interest over time. So the $50, hypothetically, let's say a kindergartner was to claim it today, right? They don't have to use that until 13, 14 years down the road. That $50, depending on how the market does, can be anywhere from three to $400, right? Is it going to pay for college? No, but it can help you pay for a laptop, uh, some towards a laptop, a book or two. Um, and the whole premise of the account, right, is to kickstart off your account, which is what we're trying to do. Um, we're going to talk about Nevada prepaid, which Troy will talk about, um, Nevada 529 plans, uh, which we're going to tell you what it is. Um, and then we're, gonna, uh, we're not going to cover the Governor Gwen Millennium Scholarship today, but it is a huge program that we have. Uh, you've probably heard of it before. If you do have questions about it, please feel free to ask. Um, it is a program that... Uh, it, it rewards high school students um, by giving them in-state college tuition that we will help up to $10,000. So that's also a great program that we house. Uh, the Silver State Matching Grant Program that Troy will also cover. And then we have a student loan ombudsman that the legislator created uh, last session to help anybody when it comes to student loan related uh, information. So next slide. All righty, so children with an established college savings account are up to seven times more likely to attend college than those without. And that is from the Washington University Center for Social Development. So this is why we, we believe, right, as a state, it is so important to help kickstart that account when it comes to 529s or whatever, whatever it may be when it comes to post-secondary education. Because we know dollars are, you know, especially now during the pandemic times, it's tough. So we want to help however we can with a small contribution to kickstart off that account. So um, that is a great stat that we have and we often share because even the $50 that you claim on behalf of kickstart, 
that is a college savings account. So that is, that is a starting point, and we want to kickstart that off for you to help you also make contributions to it. Next slide. So this is a little bit more about the Nevada Kickstart program. Um, it is an account for all students and started kindergarten uh, in a Nevada public or private charter elementary school since 2013. Uh, every kindergartner receives an initial deposit of $50 made by the state treasurer's office. So if you are in kindergarten, I believe through sixth grade right now, Troy, you can still claim it if your child is in fifth or sixth grade. So you have time, right? Um, so it doesn't necessarily just have to be kindergartners or first graders. Even if your child is already in middle school, you have time to do it. Um, but I know that the legislator was, is going to meet on it. And I know that they may cut up, make a cutoff to like fourth grade. So if you can do it earlier, it is better to do it now as opposed to possibly waiting. Next slide. So the, the initial deposit is $50 into 529. Um, the program, the, the, the partner that we use is SSGA, the ones that you just opened up outside. Same partner. You cannot make contributions into this account. It is a closed account. So it is awesome that we had you already open up an account where you can make contributions and where, where we will make a contribution as well. Um, either the, the $100 or the 529 that you win uh, a little bit later. Uh, your child is able to use the money for eligible high, higher educational expenses. So this means a lot. Um, 10 to 15 years ago, it may have only meant tuition and books, um, but the government has done a really good job of making it a lot more broader, right? So if you attend college now, and if you, have, if you don't have a laptop, you're not going to get that far, right? So an educational expense now is even a laptop. So the $50 that you claim today, again, down the road, it can be $400. Is it going to pay for an entire laptop in 14 years? Maybe not, but it can pay for 50% of it. And it's something. So um, and educational expenses can mean room, board, um, books, tuition, fees, a lot of different things. Uh, the amount they will have once they graduate high school is unknown. So we started the program in 2013. So the first class that we have, they're still, they have not graduated college yet. Um, but once they do, we'll have a good idea of what that $50 gave us back. So, you know, the $50 can be $250 or $300 uh, down the road. Uh, next slide. So it is an automatic enrollment. Um, students' data, the data we receive is directly from the schools, um, from the school district. So we do collect it um, throughout the year. So if you do enter for any reason, let's say you entered a, a week or a month after school began, we will still pull a query and get that information uh, that we need. Uh, parents do not apply or complete any paperwork whatsoever, and parents may opt out if you decide. And then most importantly, no social security numbers are collected, right? It is a process that all we really need is your Clark County School District ID, um, and that's how we go ahead and we'll kickstart that process to getting you the funds. Okay, so if we go to the next slide. So to continue on about the Nevada College Kickstart program, again, uh, this program started in 2013 with the first kindergarten class. It was kind of a test pilot, and now all these years later, there have been you know, roughly 250,000 children in the state of Nevada that have these College Kickstart accounts. So, so those of you with, with smaller children here in the audience, you've probably seen correspondence that we've sent through email, through letters, about claiming the Nevada College Kickstart account. So to start the conversation, there are several 529 plans that are available from the, the treasurer's office. So the plan that many of you opened up uh, here tonight is just one of them, the SSGA You Promise 529 plan, and there are many more. So if we go to the next slide. Um, to find your child's College Kickstart ID, you simply go to collegekickstart.nv.gov and make sure you have the following in hand, the child's first and last name, their date of birth, and the student ID number, as Abraham mentioned. So if we go to the next slide. Oh, okay, I guess, keep going. <laughs> Congratulations again to all the winners. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about 529 plans. What is a 529 plan? 
So a 529 plan is named after the 529 section of the IRS code for the same reason that a 401k and those type of plans are named that because it's just simply named after the IRS code. They're otherwise known as qualified tuition programs. So when you hear 529 out there in the news, that's all that's referring to. It's a tax-advantaged college savings account. That's what you opened up tonight is a tax-advantaged college savings account that we'll talk about here. And it can be used for, as Abraham mentioned, it can be used for room, board, books, other eligible college expenses. And the money is taken out completely tax-free if it's used for those eligible expenses. So as the years go by, with the, the account that you opened up tonight, you're making contributions into it, saving into it, and then whatever it grows to and you use for your child when they go to college, all that money can be taken out tax-free if it's used for those eligible expenses. So if we go to the next slide. So these are the plans that we do offer. We're not going to talk about each of them in depth tonight. We will, we will just touch on a few of them. Obviously, the SSGA U Promise 529 plan, the one that most of you uh, opened up before the meeting. And we're also going to talk about prepaid tuition. But I just will mention the other ones here. We have the USAA plan, which is more geared toward members of the military. Also, Vanguard plan, which is ranked uh, silver out of uh, you know, many 529 plans that are ranked in the country. Also, Putnam Investments, more of a 529 plan that you would open up with your financial advisor. And a, a new one that we have, also the Wealthfront 529 plan. So if we go to the next slide. So I know this is maybe kind of hard to read here, but what this shows here is a college degree versus no college degree by educational attainment, what you can realize as far as earnings throughout your life if you have a college degree. And again, it's a little bit hard to read up there, but it shows here that if you have a bachelor's degree, and this is you know the latest data that we have is the third quarter of uh, 2019, that again, th these are on average numbers, that you could have average weekly earnings of almost $1,300 per week. And if you kind of look down here to high school diploma or in no college, compare that with only $749 per week. And as you kind of do the math, and there's some statistics out there that show that it's almost a million dollars over your working lifetime more that you have in your pocket, so to speak, of working 30 or 35 years, having a college degree as opposed to those that don't. And who wouldn't want our children in the future as things become much more competitive in the workplace to be able to have that much more money uh, because they have a college degree. And if times ever get as bad again as they did, during the Great Recession, we all remember that. It's still, it's still kind of fresh in our minds, even though it was 13 years ago. If something like that were to ever happen again, and there's a serious downturn, boy, you'd really want to have that college degree in your back pocket to, be, to re remain competitive for jobs of the future. So we'll go to the next slide. So where can 529 accounts be used? Well, practically any college technical or trade school in the country. If they take federal financial aid dollars, which you can look up on the FAFSA.gov website, which is practically 97% of the schools in the country, if they take 529 money, their federal financial aid, then uh, that school is good to go for being able to send your 529 money there for your child. And it includes public and private institutions, two-year and four-year institutions, undergraduate and even graduate school, and payments can be made directly to the school on a tax-free basis. So if we go to the next slide. So here's how to open up a 529 account, specifically SSGA, which many of you already uh, did here before the um, event started, which if I could just pause just for a minute and, and say um, how impressed I was with everybody doing that tonight because I've been with the treasurer's office now for 11 years. I, I've been with three treasurers, 
with Kate Marshall, Dan Schwartz, and now Zach Conine. And in all the years that I've done, I've done countless events. I visited practically every elementary school in this valley, and never have I seen what I've seen here tonight of not only education, but parents taking action and opening up 529 accounts. And I promise you'll never regret it. This will be the night that years later you'll say, I'm so glad we opened up that account, made the contributions, because we now have the money for my son or daughter's education. So anyway, just wanted to say that, how impressed I was. So if we go to the next slide. So again, you can use this for future reference, even though you did this tonight. So you go to Nevada's 529.com, and you click on the green Enroll Now button, and you just enter the necessary information for you and your beneficiary, as you did. And then you just choose your investments. Again, you can choose the college date portfolio or customize the portfolio. And if we go to the next slide. So we just have the um, information there and roll now. And we can, we can just scroll through these. And then as you put in there the information, and this is great information to share with your um, family as well as they uh, do this. Now, let's talk about the Silver State Matching Grant Program. So a few of you asked about this um, tonight. So with an account open, you can take advantage of this program. It's very similar to a 401k type of a match that you would get through a private employer. So the basic premise of how this works is, first of all, let's talk eligibility. If you are the account owner of an SSGA U Promise account, which you took the first step to do that tonight in opening up your account, uh, most of you. If your household AGI is under $75,000, and also if you're a Nevada resident, and if your child is 13 years old or younger at the first time that you're applying for the grant, then you, if they're 13 year olds or younger, I'll make that qualifier, as of December 31st of the year you're first applying, then you are eligible for this program. Now, the application period is April 1st through July 31st. So you have about you know, five or so months before you can apply for it. But like I say, you can open up the SSGA account anytime during the year. And then just you know, keep in mind, next April, you go on your account. You basically just check a couple of boxes saying, saying that you make under 75000 of your household. And you're automatically enrolled in the program. And as long as you're making three, at least $300 contributions during the year, you'll be matched up to $300, and the money will be put into your account the following January, and you can do that for five years. So if we go to the next slide. So as it says here, it's $1,500 over five years. The money is obviously on a first-come, first-served basis. We usually get three to 400 applications per year that th those numbers tend to grow each year. So those that get their applications in uh, you know, quickly after April 1st are the ones that are able to get that in there, um, first of all. So I can't stress enough of the realization of having free money deposited into your account. So between what most, if not all of you, are getting tonight as far as either $100 or $529, and then signing up for this matching grant, between now and the next five years, you're getting all this free money for college. I can't stress enough that there's nothing else to it. It's just as you're making contribution, every the following January, this money is deposited into your account. So next slide. So we talked about that. They're deposited directly into the beneficiary's account uh, the following January. Go to the next slide. Okay, so let's pause here and talk about Nevada prepaid tuition. Many of you have heard of this program. So here's the main difference. The account that you opened up tonight is known as a defined contribution program. So it's very similar to like a Roth IRA. You put money into it, it grows over time. That, the growth combined with your contributions, that's what you have for your child when they go to college. The prepaid tuition program works a little bit different. It's like a defined benefit program. So those in the audience that work in government, whether it's here at Clark County, the state, the city, the federal government, 
you're hopefully in the future, <laughs> we're expecting a pension through PERS. Prepaid works a little bit like that. So you're putting money into something over time. You're purchasing a contract for credit hours and getting a set benefit at the end of a term, which is a little bit like how a pension would work. That's why it's known as a defined benefit program. And as it says here, what you're doing is you're locking in the tuition. So it's, think of it this way. It's just as if you're sending your child to college today. Doesn't matter if they're five years old, seven, eight, 10, 11, whatever. You're sending them to, to college at today's in-state rate. So you're locking it in. And it was established in 1998, so it's been around for about 23 years now. So if we go to the next slide. So I know that's a little bit hard to read, but it, you've got um, four flexible payment options. And you can do one lump sum, you can pay the whole thing off. You can do five year, 60 monthly payment plans. This is a new one, a 10 year payment plan. Or you can do what's called an extended monthly. And what that means is the age of your child right now to the time they go to college, you can stretch out those payments. And obviously the payments are gonna be lower if you do it that way. There's university plans, there's community college plans. You can combine a community college and a university plan. And even though we don't have this up on the screen, I only have one copy here tonight, I apologize, but all this is on the website. If you go to navigate.gov, we have just released the pricing sheet for the 2022 enrollment period, which begins in a couple of weeks, November 1st. So if you want to know, according to the age or grade of your child and the university plan you want to do, you just look on this chart and it shows you what your price would be. So I have this up here if anybody wants to see it, but all of this information is on our website at navigate.gov. So if we go to the next slide. So again, it offers um, families the option to take control of rising in-state uh, tuition rates and offers affordable payment plans. Um, this one is available for newborns to ninth graders. That's another difference between this plan and the SSGA. So the SSGA, you promise 529 plan. Some of you are opening it up for yourself as the beneficiary, which is absolutely fine. No age restrictions on that. But as you open up a Nevada prepaid tuition plan, it, the beneficiary must be a newborn and up to ninth grade. And they can be used in, co in uh, combination with other scholarships, you know, such as uh, Governor Grimm Millennium Scholarship and others that you might get. So if you go to the next slide. So I know this is just a little bit dated here, but as of June 30th of 2020, last year, there have been over 22,000 children in Nevada that have um, been enrolled in this program. And Nevada is one of 11 states in the country currently that still have a Nevada prepaid tuition program. It is very well funded. And I'll just pause here also and say that money in these plans, especially the Nevada prepaid tuition plan and the trust fund is not mingled whatsoever, any way, shape or form with taxpayer dollars or any kind of state dollars. It is a very well-funded program. And if you ever hear in the news that the state, you know, doesn't have money for this or doesn't have money for that. It is never mingled with these type of programs. It is very, it was well over 100% funded, meaning that if all the obligations in this program had to be paid tomorrow, everything would be covered 100% and then some. And again, many, I've seen it over the last 11 years, many programs in the country, prepaid programs, have either closed to new enrollment or completely shut down altogether. But Nevada's plan, always shines as one of the best in the country. So, and it is, this program is required by statute to have an independent audit conducted each and every year, and the audit report is provided and included and published in the annual report of the program. We, um, just this week, are working on our annual report for this program, and it's gonna be released here in a couple of weeks for the fiscal year ending uh, 21. So go to the next slide. And as I said, the open enrollment period is uh, November 1st, coming up here in a couple of weeks through April 30th. And your first payment is not due 
until May 15th. And even though we don't have it here on the slide, um, we just released an incentive that we're going to do for this open enrollment period. Haven't done this before. Usually the, the enrollment fee is $100. And for this open enrollment period only, enrollment is only going to be a penny, that's the enrollment fee, to get started. And that $100 you would have paid for the fee, we are going to put in the SSGA You Promise 529 plan that you just opened up tonight. So you're, that fee is being not only waived, it's being given to you in the form of a contribution into this program. And it says here, time is money. So just a really quick example of what you could save with this program. Parents who purchased a four-year university plan in 2000 for their infant paid roughly $8,900. Boy, if we could go back to those times when tuition was, was that cheap. When their child enrolled in college in 2019, their 120 credit hour contract was worth almost $27,000. So that's a savings of approximately $18,000. So, that the savings can be more, it can be less. Just a really quick story. Um, years ago, the, the former uh, mayor of Reno, Bob Cashel, who was unfortunately a couple of years ago, has passed away, um, called us up once just for fun. And he says, hey, I got prepaid tuition contracts for all my grandchildren. Just for fun, let's run the numbers and see what I saved on tuition because some of his grandchildren were starting to go to college. So we kind of crunched the numbers for fun and looked at it. And we found out he saved, by investing in this program, $100,000 in college tuition. We were blown away by looking at the numbers on that. So anyway, that's just an example of really what you can save by taking advantage of this program. So if we go to the next slide. So again, this will kind of be reviewed, but when opening up your SSJ You Promise 529 account at the event here, we'll deposit the initial $15. So this, we, we'd, we'd written this down here if the, the numbers were quite larger, so really this will not apply. Everybody here is going to win a lot more than this. It's going to be either $100, which some of you already have won, or the 529. So if we can roll through these slides. Okay, so we already went over this. We're going to go to the next slide. Um, let's see, open up your account. Okay, yeah, if we go to the next slide. So this is the team. You've met a couple of us here tonight. I'm Troy Watts, the marketing coordinator with the state treasurer's office. As I said, I've been here 11 years. Abraham Gomez is our college navigator. He's really the one that kind of boots on the ground going out to events. It's great that things have, you know, opened up more, that we're able to go out to in-person events. I mean, this wasn't even a realization being able to, to do this even just a couple of months ago. So this is awesome. We also have Jamil Walton. She is our specialist with the Kickstart program that we talked about earlier. Naomi Nevers, um, she is our staff member that's up in the Carson City office, office and she's our specialist with the Governor Gwynn Millennium Scholarship, if you have any questions on that. And Evelyn Castro, it's a fairly new position for, for her, and it's our student loan ombudsman. And she meets with families in the state individually, talks about student loans, what your rights are, responsibilities, helping you navigate through uh, problematic loans and things like that. So she's your go-to person for that. So go to the next slide. I think that ends it. So again, really appreciate, that, appreciate the opportunity to be here. If you have any questions, we're staying after to be able to answer those and oh, okay awesome so. <laughs> so we want to take any questions um, and answers now that you might have um, yes sir and he has a microphone and we have to use microphones just because of the folks that are listening online it's a new world that we're in everything's got to be both <laughs> so for the prepaid tuition program if uh, your child goes to school out of state or if in 15 years from now, the government decides to offer free college tuition, what happens to that account? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm glad you brought that up. Very good question. So first of all, I just need to address one, one part of that, that um, the prepaid tuition program can be used, as, as I said with the SSJ plan, at any eligible college in the country that takes federal financial aid. It's just that it pays at the in-state rate. So just a really quick example of that would be, say for example in the future, you've been paying into prepaid tuition, your child gets accepted to UCLA, just making up numbers here, and say in the future, 
Um, at UNLV or UNR, it's $500 a credit hour, but UCLA is $700 a credit hour. We'll pay that school $500 and you make up the difference. Now, if in the future, if that situation happens where community college or college tuition is free and the parents are like, okay, what do we do with this prepaid tuition contract? Now we don't need this anymore. You have a lot of options. You can transfer it to a sibling or a first cousin that maybe they're in a situation where they would go to a college that would still charge, if I can say it that way. Or you can cancel the contract and receive everything you've paid in, all your money back, a refund minus the $100 uh, cancellation fee. Or there's even situations where the child gets a full ride scholarship and, the, and they don't have any siblings and the parents are like, what do we do with this now? Well, it's your money and you can request that, that refund in those situations. So, yep, good, good question. Is this, can you hear me? Okay. Is this only for the four-year programs or is this for any of the extension programs? Because I know that sometimes the kids get in certain programs that are five or the seven-year uh, tier programs. So I was wondering, how do you factor that in to the, to the navigate or how do you, you know, set that up? So uh, for like, like technical schools and, and things like that, it is, um, as I mentioned before, if they take federal financial aid dollars, then you can send 529 monies to those schools. And yes, it includes undergraduate, graduate school programs, you know, four and six years. Actually, now the prepaid tuition plan does now cover graduate school to where it didn't before. So if the school that your son or daughter is looking at, like a technical or a trade school, I think even like beauty schools and things like that, it, if it does take federal financial aid daughter, dollars, it would be covered for those 529 plans. The one I was referring to is that new bio, uh, biomedical um, degree, and it takes seven years to get so that's the one I was talking about, the biomedical, that, that most, you know, some of the new kids are looking at. Um, right. And it's a seven-year program instead of the regular four standard year program. Right. If it does take the, 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 the financial aid dollars, then yes, it would be covered for, for all those years that you could use it for, for like a, for example, an SSGA plan. Yes. Hello. Oh, thank you. Um, on the Nevada prepaid tuition, if there, you know, for whatever reason you can't make a monthly payment or something happens, what happens in that event? Yeah. So very good question. If for prepaid tuition, if you're going along and, and uh, just to make a qualifier there, so that one especially, prepaid tuition is one where you've made a commitment to make monthly payments into that program, whether it's, you know, uh, whether it's the 10 year, five year, whatever. So, if you run into a situation, and it happens with all of us, especially with, with what's going on right now with COVID in the economy, please just give us a call. We have, I don't know if I showed it on the screen there, but we have specialists, prepaid tuition specialists at our office that can help out. Please give us a call, let us know the situation, and we can work it out on a case-by-case -case basis. Maybe if it's a couple of months, that you're like, I can't make the payment right now, we can work that out. Or if it's gonna be more of a long-term thing, maybe we downgrade the program, maybe you just say, I can't do this anymore, and request a refund, but absolutely call us, and we're more than willing to, to help you out on a case-by-case -case basis with that, so. For the 529 plan, if your contributions are going out through your employer through automatic deductions, is that pre-tax? It, it's actually after-tax dollars. And that's a good question. Um, it, the same goes for, um, for all of them, for prepaid tuition, any of those programs that I mentioned, um, that's an important qualifier. It's after tax dollars, unlike a 401k that would be pre-tax that would be taken out. So yeah, real good question. Um, for the question that the gentleman in the back here asked about the seven year program, is there a time frame where you stop giving uh, for the 529 plan? Or if there is a seven year program, can you continue to give to the 529 until they are done? 
Yes, yeah, so in the case of, like, for example, the SSJ, you promised plan that you opened up tonight, you can continue, and, and Tiffany, feel free to jump in if I'm saying anything incorrectly here. You can continue to make contributions into that program indefinitely and keep paying into a school if you want to. For the, in the case of the prepaid tuition program, that one, you have six years to use it, and that one has a maximum of, as I mentioned before, 120 credit hours. So if you've used all that up, for example, in four years, you wouldn't be able to you know, take any more money from that program and use it for a combination of like five and six and seven year. But in the case of SSGA, you promise, you could use that indefinitely and keep even paying into it while you're using it for college. The money can come and go, so to speak, if I said that right. <laughs> So, so can I ask a question? Because uh, on that note, so what we find today is a lot of folks in my age bracket wish I'd like to go back to school and get some stuff. So in the event that my ch grandchildren don't use all their money, it could be transferred back to me and yes. I could actually use it in my profession? Absolutely, yes. We've had cases before that, yes, those later in life want to go get a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, and you absolutely can use that SSG, you promised 529 plan for that. Yep. Yeah. So if our uh, gross amount for the household income changes, do we automatically, does the account automatically cancel out? Yes, for the matching grant, right? Is that what you're asking? Correct, yes. Yeah, so really good question on that. That's why you have to apply for it each and every year, but the beauty of that program is, so say for example, let's just fast forward to April next year, and let's say in 2021, you made under 75, you're good to go, you applied. Now let's say in 2022, you made 80,000. You just wouldn't apply in 2023, but you would still get the money for, for next year, if that makes sense. So you can, I've seen families skip a year, like if their income fluctuates, you make it this year, you get the money, you get to keep it. Next year you don't, and you can keep doing that for a five-year period. Got so, it. yeah, good question. Okay, does any, oh, we have a couple more questions. Thank you. Um, I had a question. In, in addition to the monthly payments, thank you, are grandparents able to... Um, make one-time contributions to these accounts or would they have to set up a, an additional uh, plan for themselves on behalf of the grandchildren? Yeah, so very good question. So it's a program called U-Gift, and again, Tiffany, if it, feel free to jump in, but th that is a program where grandparents, other family, friends, through a unique code can uh, make one-time, or even more than that, one-time contributions into your SSJ, you promise 529 plan. Like for example, if there's a graduation, a birthday, other type of special event, that you can send that out to the, the family and friends, grandparents, and they can, yes, they can make contributions with that code into the account. Yep, so, good question. What's that? Uh, Tiffany's saying no, you don't. <laughs> There's actually a link if you go into yeah. the child's account, then you could send that link. Most, what we find today is our seniors are more savvy than us middle-aged folks. <laughs> uh, the little ones and the older ones, they got it together. Yep, uh, absolutely. So uh, first of all, I want to give Troy and Abraham a big round of applause. <clears throat> Thank you so much for coming out. We do have another question. Um, Depending on how many children you have, do they set it up in different accounts, or is it just one whole account, and then when your your child starts going off to school, you just pull from one yeah. account, or is it? <laughs> yeah, good question. Um, you actually do have to set up a separate account for each and every child. You can't have two, even though we kind of saw something quirky on there tonight. You, you actually cannot... Um, I have two beneficiaries on one account, and the same goes for prepaid tuition as well. It has to be a separate account for each child. But I think what we were finding is once you set up the account once for a child, you log into that account, and then you add child B or add child C or whatever, and then it's a lot easier to do it from there. So, yeah, good question. Okay, we have, uh, we're going to take one more question because I want to keep with the spirit of the 45 minutes that I told you all are 40. Um, and then, but they're going to be around for about a half an hour afterwards. And then 
We know that there's a few people left with their raffle tickets if they want to, as soon as we finish, make their way to my staff back there. Um, they will collect their $529. So go ahead with your questions. So just to clarify, you said that this was post-tax? So any interest that accumulates in the future would also then just be like a Roth IRA, which is essentially, you know, there's no taxation on it, correct? Right. In fact, that's, ex that's pretty much how the, the, the plan works, very similar to a Roth IRA. Yes. Okay, perfect. After tax, and then and it grows tax-deferred, and you're taking out everything tax-free if used for the, those eligible college expenses. So it's only tax-free if you use it? Yes. Okay, for... Yeah. College, so it's essentially if you don't, then you get double dipped, right? Well, uh, yes, absolutely. O on your growth, you would get a tax penalty. Like, say, for example, I'm making up a number here. You amass $10,000 in a SSGA account all these years. Your child, as our other treasurer used to say, your child says, I'm going to be a rock star. I'm not going to you know, use it for anything else. You can take the money out and buy a boat, buy a car, but you will get hit with the tax penalty on the growth. Just remember that. So. That's... But that's more of an IRS rule than our rule, just right. so you know, right. that's right. why. Yeah. So before you all go down that road, yeah. uh, it is an IRS rule on the 529 because what um, they want you to do is to actually, it, and it, the 529 is set up specific for education, um, much like any other investments. If you don't use it for what it's intended, like the health care or any of those other things, then you got to pay taxes on it, and rightfully so. So don't beat the state up. It's a federal <laughs> rule. Call someone over there. <laughs> no, not beating them up, but I just want to make sure that I'm clear. That, but you said if my child decides to go be a rock star, I can't use that money to go back to college myself. Yes, which would right. not Absolutely. be taxed, that. right? That's correct. You can. Right. So it's in your best interest to hang on to the money if they don't want to do that. Right. You can even name yourself as the beneficiary and not cash that out and just say, oh, that's my only option, which it's not. You have many options to right. hang on okay. to it. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can. So, uh, first cousin, first up to well, first well, cousin. Prepaid tuition right? is is a sibling or a first cousin, and with with uh, SSJ, you promise it, it still has to be family, but it's a little bit more at broader. Yes, that you can do with consanguinity yes. counts. <laughs> yep. uh, so here's what I want to say: is uh, we'll be around. Uh, we have everybody's email address, so we'll send you a copy of the presentation. Um, I hope that you feel like you got something out of it. First, you got $15. Most of you won, uh, I think, um, all but the five won $100, and you learned about the $50. So your um, head start into your child's future is much appreciated, and we'll um, make sure that we stay in contact with you um, in the event that you have any more questions. So thanks for coming out. And those that have raffle tickets left, please see anyone in my staff. And I really just want to give my staff a round of applause because we come up with crazy ideas, but uh, we get her done. So thank you. Thank you.